and welcome to episode 141 of MT Sorry, Wes, Millennial didn't hear the music. Talk. Run it back, I didn't hear the intro music. <laughs> done it right. run it. <laughs> We're on <laughs> Zoom. Can we, can we run it back? Zoom again. Do you want to actually run it back? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, now should we? Ah, <laughs> uh, no. Nah, that's a, that, that's a that's a bad cold open. I'm hit, I'm down for that. Um, I'm one how, of your hosts. Brayden. How disrespectful can we be on Zoom? As disrespectful. Mm. As I, can I open a bueno bar and just start eating it? Like, is that how? I mean, no one's stopping you. So if you, you get nuts, into the hmm. mic. and you told me we had a, a jingle, Alex, but I'm not hearing it. Well, so does I, that give I, me free I, reign? <laughs> yes. Yes. Sing your song, buddy. Millennial move dog. That's it. That's it. I really wish I video songs. I want to see the passion behind it. Say your names. Uh, Christian. Hello. Michael. Hi. Hi, Alex. Perfection. Alex. Um, I think that's all the requirements to start a podcast. So <laughs> four white men. What have really you guys been watching? Yeah, you gave um, your verbal consent by saying your name on the show. So it's I watched a movie print. called The Four White Men. Um, no, that's every really. that's movie. Cool. <laughs> yeah, actually. That I've also seen The Four Kings. With the, the movie I watched. Because <laughs> <And, laughs> like, the main movie I watched that I watched more than once that I had need to talk about is uh, The Hunt for Red October. Oof. That's, a, uh, that's a hefty movie. It is. It is. Do we? Any? Anyone have any experience with the Hunt for Red October? I've never seen it. I've never it's seen a, it, but I know. Cult. And I know it's in one of my. Da- I know it's in my dad's top five films of all time. Damn. Yeah, everyone's. I was about to say it's one of those that everyone's dads loves, right? Mm. It's it's a classic. So how good can it really be? Men. <laughs> it is a um, dad movie. It's. It, I mean, it's Sean Connery just in a submarine ordering people around. That's <laughs> what that's more could you, you want? <laughs> yeah, like it's just it's sheer Connery. So it's every dad's dream. Yeah, exactly. And there's you know there's a there's a Russian submarine, there's an American submarine, and you know, um, they they do things. They run away from torpedoes. Sean Connery says things. It's great. It's brilliant. Oh, we get any uh, impersonations? Eric, Eric, Eric Baldwin as well <laughs> is uh, Eric Baldwin. Guy. Eric. Yeah. No, really? not Eric. Alec. Alec. Oh, I, I was about to say, is that one we just like have never heard of? Another yeah. Baldwin brother? <laughs> no, there's another one. Oh, there's, yeah. Who is it? There's Alec. There's the one that was in. No, sorry. No, I'm yeah, thinking it's... of Donnie Wahlberg. <laughs> um, who's the one that? Who's the one that hates DOPs? Like, just I don't hates know. Them. Oh, that's Alec. Alec hates yeah. DOPs. <laughs> yeah, you kind of played someone. God, God, he hates them. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, is there? There's there's more than one Baldwin, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. There's four. There's four Baldwin brothers. Um, Alec, but who's Darren, the other one that's in film? Billy, Stephen, Stephen Baldwin. For some reason, oh, yeah, said Stephen that... Baldwin's in films. Oh, that's yeah. he's a Baldwin. <laughs> So like instead of, I'm, imagine, I'm just movie. imagining Chris scrolling through Google images, just being like, "That's a bold one." Just photos of Jeff Jeff Bezos. That's a bold one. That's another bold one. <laughs> God. Um, no, but it's, you know, for a moment there, instead of thinking of any famous bold one, my mind just went to other actors famous brothers. I'm like, yeah, Kevin Dillon from Entourage. He's no, that's not a bold one. <laughs> The hints in the name, man. Yeah, even Baldwin is a stain on that family. <laughs> what's 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 he's been in, Chris? Um, I'm trying to. I'd like. I recognize him immediately. Can we get I a Stephen like Baldwin check? He's like a, a, a bad villain in movies often. Mm. Stephen Stephen Baldwin. What Hi, this is my movie talk. We that, look at the Baldwin so brothers. Bad. <laughs> Honestly. Oh, oh, I, I, oh, oh, I, I oh know Steve, exactly what you mean. He's in The Usual Suspects. Oh, okay. Is that what it is? I'm is it, excuse me. He's oh, in he's the in... 2000s hit The Flintstones. He's in oh, Biodome. He's in The Flintstones? And Biodome? Yeah. Flintstones. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, his biggest hit was in Fred Claus, where he played Stephen Baldwin. <laughs> oh. What? He's been in a movie called Threesome. I'm not even joking. With the other, that's, two, that's a, other that's two of a, the Baldwin brothers? The other Baldwins. <laughs> you got left out of the threesome. We got Alec, we got Adam, we got Stephen, we got William, we got Jesus. Daniel. All oh, those more. Who are we going for? Who do we want? Adam was in Serenity. And Independence Day. 
and Fordham Metal Jacket and the Patriot. Wow. Wait, which Ooh. one's this? Adam, That's a lot. Alec. Adam. Adam Baldwin. He's, uh, you know what? Which one's, he, who's Adam Baldwin? <laughs> I don't know. He's apparently in everything. Imagine if he wasn't related to them. It's just another, just a different. Does he? Baldwin. Who's who's Papa Baldwin? <laughs> I don't know. Daniel. No, Daniel looks like he's Eden Alec. Oh, uh, Adam that... Baldwin. Uh, yeah, we we love Adam Baldwin. He's in <laughs> yeah. Chuck. He's in what? He's in Chuck. Oh, the oh, TV show Chuck. Yeah, dun, 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 dun. I, I never seen that. He also voiced Green Lantern in 2013's Injustice Game. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I don't think he's related. Uh, that's exactly. Though. That's why I recognize him from me. Yeah, that's it. That's what this I. Is, this him. is Alec for everyone who doesn't know. For everyone who doesn't know, <laughs> Alec Baldwin, hit star of Boss Baby. Yeah. 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 Yep. Um, You're on something. Known for that's what he's known for. <laughs> Definitely. That's what the fans know him for. Before, before, before last year. Yeah. yeah. ABB, always boss baby. What did you do last year, Michael? Oh, we don't we don't need to talk about that. The boss baby too. Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> and if yeah, you didn't want him to back, shoot you then. Business. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, God damn it. Oh, shots do we, fired. Do we want, oh. do we want to do classic call outs or anything? Yeah, I guess we can do something for the show. Are you yeah, gonna play from- the jingle? The show. I mean, sure. we got past the the Baldwin hour. <laughs> Every hour should have a Baldwin hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every hour Classic should be the Baldwin hour. Uh, <laughs> so Alec Baldwin wasn't in this one. No, is, he wasn't in this one. <laughs> which is a shame, really. Yeah, mm, no, you got the you got the Hoffman and the Strip, the Strip, and the Bald Man, and the and the kid who's got a severe bowl cut, like. Hairdo, it's a lot. It's like a bowl cut merged into like a really shitty classic mother. 70s oh. kid, man. It is like it's like they put a helmet on him and then just cut out the face shape of the helmet and then took it off and it was still there. <laughs> that kid's that's hair, true. man. Oh, that, that's enough I to you should lose custody it. of them anyway. <laughs> no, if I, you know what, if 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 I was. Um, Dustin Hoffman, I would have just like given over custody of this kid to Meryl Streep as soon as he knocked punch on my work. <laughs> I'd be like, that's it, you're out. <laughs> yeah, you're done. <laughs> yeah, straight up. Um, no, so so we, we watched Kramer versus Kramer. Mm. Uh, Meryl Streep, the biggest villain since the classic from this Alec thing. Baldwin in whatever movie in Rust. <laughs> <laughs> Far out. Um, yeah, straight up, uh, like unlikable. It, it, oh, am I, am I cool? I'm not the only one here, but I was no. just like, at no point in the film did I go, well, maybe she should have custody of a kid back. No. no. <laughs> so from, from when this film started and I was like, okay, she's clearly not doing well. Like she needs to focus on herself and, you know, that's understandable. And I was like, okay. And like she, she she's getting out of there uh, and we're watching Dustin take care of this little kid. And then the audacity for within a like like a year or so 18 months yeah so like less than two years to just be like i've got my life completely together i don't want you to have our kid anymore yeah chris did you i'm not sure if you watched it because you weren't here last week to find out the film I, i have not but i know of it yeah so this year this year this week was kramer versus kramer and we and basically if you know the story, it's like Dustin, uh, Meryl Streep and Dustin Hoffman married a couple. She, she gives uh, the, away the kid, but then she, comes back and wants to. Uh, she leaves. Yeah. She just sort of leaves. She, she right. kind of just leaves. Uh, she, she straight takes, up just leaves. She takes, like, she's like, oh, I took $2,000 out of a saving account because that's what yeah. I put in when we originally uh, created the account. Yeah. So she takes that. She paid, um, like, that month's bills and stuff. Yeah. yeah, she's like, she, yeah. This is shopping, bills. It's like, it's like straight she, up everything to be like, I am not held down by being here mm. anymore. Yeah. yeah. Like financially or anything. I'm I'm out. And she bounces. And yeah, so she she fucks off for 18 months and then Doc, uh Hoffman's got to try and juggle his work and family life now as a single yeah. father. And he's, he's like just given like kid. a very big like he's just given a very big like big promotion he's a very yeah. good advertising mm. agency. And so now he's got to juggle like all that pressure but now he's a single father. 
And yeah. Um, yeah, and then Meryl Streep comes back, goes, oh, I went off to California, found myself, got a, got a new BF. I got a therapist. I uh, went to therapy. Yeah, got, yeah, went to therapy, got a new job. And she goes, <laughs> she, I've worked. She did like 12 months of therapy and went, I've mm. got everything in my life sorted. <laughs> and she goes back yeah. to him and just like, and it's just as he's gotten into the groove now too. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's really, he's really get starting to get the single parent life, mm. and like, is I really bonding with the kid? Oh, he's bonding with his kid excellently, and and then she just goes, "Oh, I want him back." Not, I want joint custody, fair custody. Yeah. I want him back. When when they were sitting at the table, I was like, "Okay, so this is the point where, in any you know normal situation, she would be like, I would like to organize shared custody so that we can, you know." both be with them and she just says i want my kid and it's like mm. that's too, not how this too, works so, when so he, dustin when he, hasn't when he, done anything wrong like to her no he just like, no, he, he just like he just he's like, a was heavy a big, worker was, yeah he just worked more like it was like work first yeah. family he's not he's sort of not unfaithful not abusive not an alcoholic mm. he's just if anything he's just a bit more career focused than she yeah. than yeah. um focused yeah. on her um so Which also taking into consideration it was the 70s is mm. pretty stock standard what do like, we think it just, doesn't excuse it but like i gotta i gotta say in that before we do that alex yeah. um, in that scene where they obviously she asked him for the custody hey i very much felt it when he threw the glass against the wall that was brilliant I was like, that's fair that's fair also Everyone just skims over the fact she's just straight up stalking this kid by watching him at school from the cafe mm. across the road yeah yeah, it's a, it's a bit, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit, how you going? It's a bit, uh, um, I quite liked it. Like I had a lot of heart. I found myself quite enjoying like mm-hmm. watching their relationship grow, like, especially from that, like, you know, knocking over the punch and like making the French toast at the start. And yeah. then like right at the end, you see it, they've got it down. He knows what he's doing. Uh, when they bookended it with that, I thought that was nice. Mm. 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 Um, yeah, at the start of this film, I was like, okay, these are going to be quite unlikable characters that I'm not going to be into at all. And then by the end of it, I was like, nah, I, 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 I'm, I'm liking the, this guy trying to take care of his kid and everything. Like, I, I thought the courtroom stuff was good. Like, I, I've, I've quite enjoyed some courtroom stuff lately. So, I, I thought that was really well done. Um, and then, I like the ending. I it, it sort of came straight out of left field and I was like oh okay and then it just ends which I liked how it actually just ended but um it I thought the sort of the thing that happens at the very end to just be like oh okay really yeah. okay yeah I thought this it was is my just... this is this is my favorite one we've done so far by the way wow Ooh. yeah this yeah. one's excellent yeah this is this yeah, one even would definitely be near the top for me. Especially from a writing standpoint, this one's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Um, I now know why they. This is one of the ex- options to choose from in the directing classes we had at TAFE. Yeah. It's, um, I start to grasp that now. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. This was. This was definitely like I loved Hoffman in this. He was so incredible. And then you I like. Gotta, yeah his speeches in the courtroom yeah and just like everything like he knocks his, it out of the park his plea is so well written and he delivers like even, it even just like when he's being questioned and it's like oh and like you know he's being interrogated about like why like all these mishaps at work he's like yeah my son had like a huge yeah and they just fever. want to move on straight away they don't want to let yeah. him yeah. get an explanation in. a kid was biting him at school like you can just yeah. see like in his face like there is no, he's like what is it he's, he's like there's yet no yes or no answer yeah, and like he's trying to explain the, like the reasoning behind it, and they just want none of it. Yeah. So the moment where I went, this is my favorite one, was when they did the bookends of the the French toast. Yeah, and because mm-hmm. that was so sad, because you see them how they like, because at that point we don't like we we just assume that like we're in his situation where yeah I'm losing my son today. Yeah, I'm this losing the, full custody of my son. This is the day that I don't get to see my son every day. Yeah. So when like they've got their system down pack and everything, and I it just took me. I was and I also loved the earlier version of that mm. where he's trying to do it and he keeps saying this is fun. Like he's trying to put yeah, on yeah. this really brave face yeah. for his kid because he's just like we're in the shit now. He's doing um, that like, parent thing where you try to hide the horrible stuff from your child. And he's like, if, even mm. like, even with the, like showing that he clearly doesn't know how to do, it, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, you go to any restaurant, they fold the bread. 
Oh, like, when he's just like, yeah, men are the best chefs on the road. And he's trying to crack the egg. And he's pulling all the show out of the egg. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I, no, thought, I really thought he was fantastic in this. And mm. I loved the scene at the hospital where, like, he's so concerned. And he's just like, the doctor's just like, yeah, no, you don't need to be in here for me. Put the stitches in. He goes, he's my kid. I'm putting the stitches in. Yeah. Um, no, he's my kid. I'm yeah. going to be there when you put the stitches in. <laughs> I'm going to do it myself. <laughs> I'm doing it myself. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm putting it in. Yeah. <laughs> no one stitches my kid but me <laughs> and his mom because that was a bit of a stitch up. Um, oh. um, no, that and I had something else in mind. It's completely just, oh, one of the other moments I absolutely loved was when he's first telling their friend. At, for some reason, at first, I thought it was her sister, not um yeah not like the downstairs neighbor yeah. but yeah when he when like her neighbor's like oh you know it must have taken her so much courage to um do what she did and he goes yeah a lot of courage to leave your kid and i was just like oh and then that's the end of that scene oh, it, yeah. even, even like in those in those like first few conversations like just the slot of digs that he's having at her and like mm. even like when in that first scene he's just like no 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 like come on like he's so he's so happy about what happened at work and like mm. he's clearly mm. just like trying to like uh, i don't know i was good to see that like the kid wasn't like a little shit like running around the house like he was doing normal kid shit like he didn't want to eat the food he just wanted the ice cream i thought the kid in this was great he's good he's good yeah kid. the kid was fantastic and like when the kid is like bowling his eyes out like towards the end of the film like whoa he was I thought- great i thought there was this great little moment during the courtroom stuff where they're interrogating street about like they're trying to kind of say that she's the reason that the marriage failed and yeah. like Hoffman and like they're trying to get her to say for her to say yes. And Hoffman's looking at her and he just mouths no to her, yeah. like for her just mm. to say no, like, cause he doesn't truly really believe that. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was I thought that was excellent. Like Seems that's like what how they sort of work together against the, like, mm. cause like the, the court system was very, very aggro. And like mm-hmm. very um like antagonist like antagonistic ones like that's what it is. It's like attack, it's not because like it, you watch it and you go, oh, these two aren't trying to attack each other. The lawyers are trying to attack each of yeah. them. They're trying like, to break them yeah. down. Well, like isn't it earlier mm. on, Hoff, like the um Hoffman's lawyers like uh do you want me to be ruthless or something? Mm. And then like when he's when he sits back down after the all like, the do you have to be that like rough why do you have to be that harsh is like you want your cut child don't you it's sort of like yeah. oh fuck. like is that what it takes like to pr- like is that how you prove that you're the better parent by having someone's like whole life torn apart yeah that's the thing and like when when they start talking about the playground incident and you just go oh shit yeah like that's what's going to do him in here and like I love that he lost his job and he's just like no nah, I'm going to go out right now and get a new one in the next 24 hours oh yeah. that you, he was so convincing like when he finally got when he got to that I would have given him the like, job and he was just like no this is a one time offer like he's like yeah. really selling himself yeah because he knew his worth he knew he was much more experienced than these guys yeah like exactly. needed like and they were getting like a good deal here just because he was desperate mm. and for him just to like know that and be like you guys are going to hire me like to like you guys know that getting me for this salary is an absolute steal Steel, so yeah. this is like a one-time offer yeah. Yeah, I loved it. I thought yeah. it was like it, it, was, it, it was won. So good. it won five Oscars. It won Ooh, Jesus. Best, best picture. Yeah. Best actor. Best yeah. screenplay. Did it win four? Uh it either won best director as well. Mm. And then it won best supporting for Street, which I probably would have put her in best lead actress. Mm. If they put mm. Street in best lead actress, she won. That's a big five there. I looked before the little kid was nominated in supporting. Ah, oh, good. Which is fantastic. I love yeah, that. Because th- I wanted to yeah. see uh, if they grew up to be someone. And then I got distracted because I saw that they got nominated. I was like, oh, that's great. As your yeah, top this- film that we've done, Alex, what what have you rated it? Five. It's, five. It's a it's a five um, out of five. I'm definitely probably sitting about four and a four and a half somewhere around yeah. there. Like I yeah. it really it's definitely at the top of the towards the top mm. of my list. I'm definitely sitting at like a four, four and a half, like somewhere. It, it was there. perfectly written, perfectly paced. Oh, um, that, that is the one the dialogue was, was going to say. Even even for like a hour forty five movie, it did not feel like an hour. If yeah. that thing like flew, like even though it's not a long time, it felt so much shorter than it was. Yeah, pre felt- runtime. I just felt everything that Hoffman was giving in the film. I felt it all. I was like, oh, yeah. All yeah. of his emotions. I was just there with him. I felt like oh. I was there with him through it all. Dude, when he when he's t- he's explaining it all to his kid, uh, just like. Dude, just, that's oh. what I love too. Like, 
he explains things to the kid mm. in ways that the kid would understand. Like when he yeah. talks about when his mom first left, he goes, you know, sometimes you and your friends at school, you guys mm. have a fight. And when you guys have a fight, you want to go off and be alone. It's yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, well, that's what's happened with mom. Mom and dad have had a fight. Now mom wants to and go off and like, be alone. Yeah. yeah. And then like the next conversation, like the kid's blaming himself and he's like, no, 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 no. Like this is yeah. on, this is on us. Like, and when they have the fight over the dinner table with the ice cream and then like it cuts to a little bit later and he goes in and talks to the kid that both say that's all real yeah. that's yeah. all just like such it, good writing it's yeah mm. super well written the dialogue was so natural mm. and real it was great this is the only one so far that i've rented instead of bought and i regret renting it because i just should have bought it <laughs> you're like oh, i'm just gonna buy it now mm. that's great except spinal tap for spinal tap you couldn't get a hold of it mm. unless it was on mm. youtube is that how we watch Spinal tap yeah i think i watched it on a website say it michael i don't even know the name of the website a vpn of your choice sponsor us here now ad block <laughs> yes uh, alex do you want to spin the wheel oh fuck fuck sakes i know you never have it ready anymore it's fine especially at home just while you're getting that ready um and this no. was a perfect amount of time for a runtime for a movie um everyone saw the incredibly long film that we're all going to go see Avatar oh. 2, yes, Braden. Oh, yes, yes, Avatar 2. Yes. No, <laughs> the Batman. Avatar That's 2. It's so long. It's so long. I just, what are they going to do in this What movie? is it? Two, oh, it's almost three three hours, isn't it? 255. Two, 255. Yeah, 255. With credits. They've, they've, yeah. they've got, okay. they've made to say that with credits. They've okay. said, that's a that's that's it's still such a long movie though. Like I'm honestly expecting like an artsy, like, like we get the Riddler is like the overarching story. And then we get like a penguin story and a Catwoman story. And then the Riddler story, like, mm. I don't know. Like it, it's just, it's just I don't a- know what to expect. And I haven't really watched many trailers. Like I need to watch the tra- like trailers and stuff again. I the most watched- recent are trailer we, was pretty are good. Are we liking classic call outs? Do you want to keep it going? Like, I'm, like it. Yeah. I'm liking it. Good. Because we're running out. We don't <laughs> have a lot of films left. <laughs> we'll we to need to update list. the list. Maybe let's, Let's, let's get a bit lower in the list and we can reevaluate there. It gives us okay. time to think of movies and stuff. Fine. Guys, I'm spinning, I'm spinning the wheel. Spin the wheel. Because there is movies on there that have been there since the beginning and we haven't gotten to, so yeah. we probably get those out of the way. Perhaps. Once we do the last one, then we'll add all the new ones. But we need to figure yeah. out new ones before then. That's right. I'm all right, guys, we've got when Harry three. met Sally. When Harry met Sally. Okay. This oh is God, Billy right. Crystal, I'm pretty sure. Yep. He plays uh, the titular Harry. Is this the one in the in the I'll have what she's having? Yeah, this is this one, right? Yeah, yeah, the uh, orgasm in the diner. The okay, that's about what I was gonna say. Yeah, that's yep. okay. Yeah, a classic. Okay. Is it good? Well, it's a very classic very scene, nice. at least. Yeah, oh, seventy six. Okay, it's got good reviews. Rob Reiner, Meg oh. Ryan, Billy Crystal, Carrie Fisher. How long? Oh, how long? Uh, are you hour and thirty five. Oh, shorter again. Oh, perfect. We blasted through all the really long ones. <laughs> all the really yeah, long ones. The actual one go? No, no, we still got Casablanca on here, guys. Oh. All right, that hasn't reared its head yet. That's going to be all the right. funniest thing. When Steph and we're leaves. Adding... Sorry. So when Steph leaves, like the show, that's when we're going to pull Casablanca. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and we're adding Lawrence of Arabia. Oh, what am I thinking about? Casablanca's only an hour and 42. Yeah, what was I thinking of Arabia. Of? That's the long one. Uh, yeah. That's the really long one. Is I think the like one three of... hours. Uh, it is. I thought it was three hours. Three hours thirty minutes. Oh. Yeah, I think that's why the re- sole reason we didn't really choose because it was three and a half. That's yeah. the length of uh, Alex Lamb's Zack Snyder's Justice League. What was that? Three hours and a, three and a half hours. Yeah, I trimmed that shit. I got rid of a bunch of stuff in that film. <laughs> Basically, the movie ends. No, no one's seen it but Brayden, so I can't yeah. say when the movie ends. <laughs> Brayden, the movie ends when he pulls off his shirt and it goes straight into the camera. Yeah, yeah, it's way better. I don't have <laughs> that edit. I don't have that edit any, anymore on my computer, but I think I sent it to the chat. Hang on. So, Ooh, so Alex, if I, if I cut an hour out of Gettysburg, like just the anti cheat edit, I watch it. I will. All right. If you watch Alex Lamb's Zack Snyder's Justice League, <laughs> I will watch Christian Bianchini's Gettysburg. I could I could very easily cut out the um the really cringe over the top freedom parts and then it would yeah. just seem like a really good movie. <laughs> <laughs> Christian, I'm I'll make that I'm interested for both. Just, I'm interested for both. The parties, problem is yeah. there's just one too many um Jeff Daniels speeches about slavery. There's about three. 
<laughs> and one was fine. <laughs> one was so. Is it the question? Is is it hard to pick which one's fine, or you know which one's fine? I know which one's fine. And then he starts yeah, getting good. into it again, and the, the music comes on, and he goes, "We're fighting for the right of all men." And it's just like, "No, Jeff. No, Jeff." <laughs> <laughs> My God. Oh, Jeff, please stop, Les. <laughs> yes. I'm trying to find Alex. Alex's Zack Snyder's Justice League. All right. Well, I do want to jump in very quickly and say, uh, Mikael and I went and saw the new Scream. Ooh. Finally, um, it was very, very good. Very much enjoyed it. It was, uh, it was really fun. I liked, I, it. I liked basically just everything they did. I thought it was a great homage as well as its own new thing. Uh, Alex was right. Ghostface is fucking brutal in this mm-hmm. movie. He's a scary boy. Oh, dude! Like, I don't want to like spoil stuff, but like the broken limb. <laughs> Oh, the broken gross. limb, and, and from the first scene. Oh yeah, gross! Yeah, the, the stomp and through the hand. Oh, oh, it's the yeah, and then that Very, that the scream, that movie. scream four. They did that in scream four in the beginning yeah. as well. Yeah, what do you think the about the kind of mix up in the first thing? First time they've ever done that in a scream film. Yeah, it worked. It worked. I, yeah, I thought it. I thought it worked really well. Um, well, and the only part, the part in my review, I said they do something that I'm not sure Scream fans would like. Mm. Do you know what that? Do you have a feeling what that is now? <sighs> it's 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 bit of bit of CGI work. CGI work on a yes. certain someone. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, that was. Did you like it? That, that worked for me. I yeah, I was on board, and and it was super like unexpected. And the second it happened, it was just like what mm. um and like the rest of the audience as well we're all like huh like <laughs> what is happening um and yeah i i thought it i thought it i thought it did its part very well so did you like the reveals the reveals i liked um i it, all the sequences were great um some great one-liners in there i loved the characterization of a bunch of people dewey was fantastic love love He's the best again. dewey the Dude, best. when they're when they're on the couch, when they're at um Mindy and Chad's house, and they're all talking, and um and fucking uh Thirteen Reasons Why just like explains like they're all trying to talk about who yeah. the killer could be, and Thirteen Reasons Why just riddles off all these reasons that Dewey's a killer. It's yeah. like <laughs> your wife's left you, you you've been fired from your job, and like Dewey's just like maybe you're the killer because that cut deep. Oh my god, <laughs> the just, best <laughs> one liner. That's so good. The best one liner. It was so good. Um, also love the twins they were great twins were the uh, best part yeah the twins were fantastic um Mikhail and i absolutely just fell in love with them they were, they were brilliant which um, like mindy's incredible she's from yellow jackets oh, and her yeah. big recall speech it's awesome oh my god the recall speech is fantastic and then all, all of the sequences with her later on are great like in the basement um that sequence is great fun um uh, but uh, the that's great the the be right back scene's great too uh, <laughs> yeah. oh jack quaid was brilliant as well I like Jack Quaid a lot in this one. He he was really fun when he's telling all the he's telling all the Zoomers to get out of the house party. He's like he's like Gen Z, come on, come on, Gen Z, get out of here. I'm saving your life. Yeah, come on, um, get it moving. Yeah, I gotta say one thing. Paramount Plus really messed up today. Oh, so cool. they um they are uh, so today they put all the Scream films on. No, oh no, the three original Scream films on Paramount yeah. Plus. And whoever's in charge of that advertising needs to get fixed because I came across this and it says oh. now streaming and that's the new poster for the yeah. new film. Oh, oh that's, so, that's no. just mean. That was mean because I'm just like, oh, I'm going to watch Scream again today. So I guess what's the new Scream. It's like, nope. Um, so, yeah, Damn. that was that was a big uh-oh. Yeah. But yeah. The more I think about that film, the more I love it and yeah. I can't wait to watch it again eventually. Yeah, um, also, like, again, another thing that you mentioned last episode when you talked about it first, um, that sequence where they're just doing fake out after fake out after fake out is excellent. It's yeah. so well done. You um, went to go see a horror movie in theaters, Brad. I know, I did, and I really enjoyed it. Um, it's Scream. They played a trailer for something <laughs> actually kind of scary before, and I was like, ugh. <laughs> hey, Brad, do you want to see? This is where the movie should have ended. Zack Snyder's Justice League. Yes, exactly right. That's when it should have ended, folks. This it is didn't it. need that montage at the end. It should have just ended there. That's it. Is that and half it an hour extra? Straight to credits. There yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's like it's like five minutes. 
No, it's half an hour. It's it's long because you go into the dream sequence with the Joker. Oh, um, that's the nightmare right. sequence, yeah. and then Martian Manhunter and all that. Yeah, no, nah, I don't need any of that. God, no, no one did. No. Um, so who knows what we'll get in the Batman? Do you think we're gonna get Scream Six? Uh, it's made I, all his money back. I can see it happening. Um, there was definitely someone who people were kind of hoping to see who wasn't Stu. there. Stu. Uh, well, people yeah. want Stu back more than anything. Yeah. Uh, um, that's like that's the biggest like Scream fandom thing now. Yeah. Orig- originally, it was um, Kirby from Scream Four survived, yep. and this film confirmed that she survived. Yeah. Um, because when Jack Quaid's watching uh youtube dead meat he's watching dead meat on um oh. on youtube the, the youtube and, um, is hilarious yeah because they got dead meat to film a video like mm. a fake video in the oh, universe cool. about stab a cool. ryan ryan johnson stab a yeah. brilliant <laughs> so brilliant funny. by the way and they complained that the they complained the b in the in the stab title wasn't an a too yeah oh, um, it's just great all the meta shit was brilliantly done yeah, and so in in like the suggested videos when he's watching Dead the Dead Me video, yeah. his interviewer with Kirby Reed, Ghostface Survivor. Oh, so that's, cool. that's a blink if you miss it, but they confirm Kirby survived Scream that's 4. That's cool. Ooh. I did not see that. That's great. Mm. God. Yeah. Did you like all the little Wes Craven homages they put oh in my creatively? God. So many. And they party, were so well the done. party at the end is all for Wes. Yeah, for Wes <laughs> was the best. I love that. Oh, it was uh, really, really nice. Yeah, I, th- that movie I, thought, was awesome. I thought they just did an excellent job all around with everything. Um, and yeah, I, I think I'd, I'd rank it the same as you as well. Yeah, it's like, the second best. Yeah, it was it was great. It was I great. watched Scream 1 and 2 again this week, by the oh way. God, again? <laughs> Since, yeah, <laughs> it's like the third time I've watched Scream yeah. 1. I know, you could, it's either the third or the fourth time I've watched Scream 1 this year already. My God. Um, but that film is just incredible. My sister wanted to watch it, so we nice. watched the first two. And um Perfect. Yeah, those that first film is just that's a five out of five, if anything. Mm. What have you guys been watching? Anything of note? Um, um I watched the really. Harry Potter reunion. That was good. Oh. Have you seen the Friends one? No. Okay, so the Harry Potter one's perfect. The Friends so you one told me that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So the Harry Potter one is like. They're, they're, they're just like the opposite spectrums where like this is how you not do one this is how you do one mm, yeah. um yeah did you like the harry potter one I yeah it was it, it you, I, you what you said about it on the podcast a few weeks ago i felt exactly the same it's just natural not forced mm-hmm. there wasn't like too much detailed like diving into anything they just kind of surfaced like what the actors ran into each other and had a chat about it mm. right? yeah i yeah. i thought the most interesting part was hearing from the first part, hearing about the guy, like the Chris Columbus who did the first two, like him talking about it all and like how much pressure it was. And he shoot, shot them back to back. And like, the he, he, yeah. he had a lot to do in that one. He had to create the world. And then the other films like, kind yeah, of, piggy- but- I don't want to say piggybacked off it, but like he's established this world and this magic, yeah. this magic. Yeah. And he, he had, mm-hmm. that's all in those first two films. Certainly yeah. like all the- his, yeah, all his work, like very much established. When he laid the ground finding yeah, finding that, the yeah, kids. That's a great way to put it. And they're like that's incredible. When we found when we found Harry, we found Ron. Like, yeah, that was everything. Mm. And that and then everything else just came with it. Like I thought it was perfect. super interesting hearing Rupert talk about where he couldn't he couldn't find the line where Rupert ended and Ron began. Mm. Yeah, that, that was weird. Because because he's just like, I grew up like my childhood years, my development years, mm. I was another person essentially. Yeah, yeah, your formative answering years answering to between different names different and stuff. People. Yeah, like yeah, he, like he wasn't he, answering he, to his actual name. He yeah, would answer, answer to Ron. Ron. <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then all the JK stuff they explicitly went out to show you every time an interview with her came up to show that this was not filmed for this. This was filmed back in 2019. Yeah, like they really wanted you to know that she had nothing to do with this. Yeah, which is good. Good, good. Mm. And then that made me go back and watch uh, Through the Harry Potters. Um, hey. And I am up to Half-Blood Prince. Cool. Ah, yeah. the, the nothing, underdog of the Harry Potter films. Yeah, nothing new to share. Azkaban's still the best. Um, mm. Yeah. Cool. In my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know Choppies. That's not Choppies. <laughs> yeah. Goblet of Fires. The, yeah, oh, the, well, and, I mean, 
Um, me and Shaley have been watching, and we're up to. I think we're watching Gobble of Fire tonight. So mm. nice. The um, the reasoning behind why they all had long hair for Gobble of Fire is incredible too, because like is they, there a um, reason? That just yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. So the reasoning is like he looks like a scruffy teenager. It's good. <laughs> over over the summer, um, every for every film they grow their hair out so that when the next director would come through, they can kind of cut and model the hair how they want the characters to have their hair. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. And so, sense. so when they, so they finished, uh, Prison of Azkaban, they did the same thing. They came back in Gobble of Fire. Dan, I'm pretty sure Daniel Radcliffe talks about. It. He goes, "Oh, I had this long hair. I hated it. Couldn't wait to get back into set. So they cut it again and just make it how they wanted to make yeah. it." And the director came in and he looked at all of the kids with all the long hair and he went, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so like they spent the entire filming with long hair. With long hair. Yeah, so they went, so, <sighs> so they, that's why they've all got long hair because they, so they all had to grow it out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it I works, love that. Though. It works. Yeah. And they're, yeah all, they're, all just, they're all so excited to get their hair cut finally and that it's just like, nope, you're living with this for another couple months. Could you imagine that? Could you could you imagine the day filming like ended? They just get the mm. right the the shape the uh, clippers mm. out and just straight straight. <laughs> yeah, God, no, that's great. It's, it's great because um because ever I mean everyone the fourth one is always the hormonal teenage the hormonal teenage one. Yeah, that's what yeah. the fourth one is. So yeah. for them to it reference, they that. even reference that in the thing. They said, yeah, this is the teenage one. Yeah, it's the one where they were all going through all their changes and everyone's like, uh, I did like how they were saying <laughs> that movie reflected the reality of all the teenage cast members because they were yeah. all kind of intermingling and like all shy and nervous and, you know, girls they and boys. Talk, and They talk whatever, about Emma Watson, who had the, Emma Watson had the biggest crush on Tom Felton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, when they did the actual dance scene, like a lot yeah. of the kids weren't acting much. They were all awkward and nervous, exactly like we were at our school <laughs> like, dances. Yeah, um, and the, it was Ron like, dancing with the teacher too. That was all real. And that, oh my yeah. god, that's so. Good. And then like the the kids yelling out, like whistling, you know, like making a joke. I was like, yeah. that the exact thing happened at my school dance. Like when the kid had to dance with the instructor <laughs> or whatever. Like yeah. yeah. God. Yeah. Anyone else watch anything else? Because I don't want to just jump in and then uh, becomes the I Alex podcast. Was, um, Gem, uh, Gemma finally watched Eternals, so I've rewatched Eternals. It's definitely mm. still not my most favorite mm. Marvel movie. I think I, it hasn't really changed up or down my opinion of. I think it stays it's, where I think it was. It's yeah. one of the only Marvel movies I've never gone back to rewatch after yeah. like now that it's available to watch. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Well, Gen- like now that it's available to watch, I haven't rewatched it at all. Yeah. I yeah, rewatched it. Loved it. This wasn't even me being like, oh, Gemma, you want to see this? She's like, we'll just scroll through what do we want to watch. And, and she was like, oh, has this come out on Disney Plus now? I was like, yeah. She's like, all right, can we watch this? You know what she wanted to see at the end? Harry Styles. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That's, all, that's all it's for. But I, I think she enjoyed it. And then we re, the night before, I think, we, re, uh, we watched The Hangover. And that's the first time I've seen it in a good, like, eight years or so. I forgot oh, how much I liked that movie. One of the best comedies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if it was for... It was really her sort of humor, like it's, it's a boy different. comedy. Yeah, that's just but, why I'm not a particular fan. Is that why? <laughs> Maybe that might be why. But, but like the thing is, like even though I haven't seen this one, I, I can remember. I could re- as it was happening, I was remembering the movie like on beat. Like I knew exactly when things were going to happen, like and all that. So that's like and- that's almost a great whodunit, but in the in the way where like you're trying to solve, it's a great mystery, like where it's yeah. done, yeah. and you're solving them the whole time, and like you're trying to solve mm. it the and whole you're time for the ride. Like, yeah, and, and there's a clue right at the beginning as well. It's like the, one of those yeah. great things where you can work it out. Mm. Yeah, I that the sec I don't even mind the second one that much. Obviously, it's way lesser. Like if the first mm. one's a four out of five, the second one's like a three, yeah. or maybe a two and a half, and then the third yeah. one's dog shit. Yeah, I've I've only ever watched the third one once, I reckon, and I, that was like when it dude, came sort of around when it came out. The first poster for one, they they did the poster like they did the last Harry Potter poster when they're like it's a finale. <laughs> oh my god, of course, <laughs> I'll find it. <laughs> but I think that's anyone... mostly all I've yeah, that's pretty much all I've yeah. been watching. Um, only other honorable mention is uh, Munich Edge of Edge of War. Oh yeah, new Munich. Netflix. Is it show or um, movie? It is new, right? Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. not just, just been added to Netflix. So it is a movie. Uh, and okay. it's about the uh, Munich conference in uh, just before World War II. 
Uh, mainly, it's it's Neville Chamberlain. He's gotten a bad uh, bad rap in history as being mm-hmm. the guy that you know ap- appeased Hitler. I remember seeing until that until it got too too far, and too everyone's kind of um, historically goofed on him. And this movie kind of shows the um, the more kind of ma- uh, woke view, which is like, no, he did, he was good. He was you know he's the prime minister. Come on, he was he's doing mm. a good job. What was what what could anyone else have done? You know, and mm. yeah. Uh, we come in, got people, big historical fig- uh, figures. Hitler makes an appearance. Actor playing him does a great job. He's like physically tense when he's Ooh. on the screen. Yeah. Like y- you feel the anxiety of the characters. Like he comes off as an absolute madman. <laughs> like, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's good. We see a snippet of Mussolini, which I think was just completely CGI because it looked exactly <laughs> like him. Um, there's a guy that plays Himmler for five seconds and he looked exactly like him. So I like to be the guy that got to get in, well, had, had to get in full Himmler makeup only to be on screen for two seconds. Spent <laughs> all day the on set. <laughs> yeah. That. The morality of that. Yeah. Well, wow. all day is a horrible, horrible person. Yeah. But yeah. Um, movie though. Yeah. Really good. Uh, it, it definitely had this woke view where it showed, uh, the kind of rise of the Nazis pre-war and there's a um a German who supports them kind of talking about it and he's saying like no nah, the race thing like that's separate we're just talking about better Germany and it's just such a parallel to like a Trump supporter today or something yeah. like they they clearly I think they were trying to do that to make yeah, you go, trying like, to make oh, that parallel this is how it begins <laughs> like you know yeah. this is how it starts yeah. it's all fun and games and you know this is how yeah. extremism happens yes yes i've and heard I think very a good job at that i've heard very good things about it mm, I, that that aspect specifically like you're just like oh my god this is exactly like the the beginnings today yeah <laughs> yeah well yeah. get on it i, I watched you. two films can, oh, I very, three. can I very, very quickly thank the wonderful Jai Perry? No. Oh. Can you oh, thank I love him? Jai Perry. <sighs> Thanks, Jai Perry, for all of your thank support. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you to Jai Perry. Jai Perry is one of our wonderful Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash millennial movie talk. One of how many? One of many. <laughs> and many is an amount, and that amount is above zero. But under what? Under <laughs> 50. So you can help us get to 50 Patreons. Um, yeah, we'll couple I, off. Show us a buck or two. And um, you can help make the show happen and help make the show better and better and better. Um, and you can do that. Patreon.com slash minute we've talked. Thank you, Joe Perry. Go, Joe Perry. Alex, what'd you watch? Go get him. Oh, God, I watched I watched something, Braden. Oh, no. I watched something. I'm nervous to bring this up with you. Oh, that's not good stuff. This is, I know. Very no watch for the first time in many many years. I watched National Treasure one and two. <gasps> oh, yes, 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 <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I didn't yes. feel yes when I was watching, especially oh, the first no. one. Do those? Wow. The second one is good. It's yeah. a good film. The second one, really? Yeah, the second one is a lot better than the first one. I. Oh. <laughs> Uh, no, <laughs> no, I do, I, do, I do love the second one though. The second Christian, one is great. Unfortunately, the critics agree with me because okay. the first one okay. is not very good. The it's first one is is an excellent Nicolas Cage movie. Let me, yes. Let me, okay. Let me, let me, <laughs> like, okay. Like, yes. Disclaimer. But the second one's a better <laughs> Nicolas Cage film because you get the outburst in um, that place where he meets Diane. Keen again when he's when they pretend to have a fake couple argument. Oh um, yes! Oh yeah. my god! Yeah. Isn't that yeah, in the royal great. palace? Yeah, that's yeah, in like the like royal palace. palace. Buckingham, Buckingham palace. palace. Yeah, yeah, and and they have the fake oh argument, and he's just like bang us a match. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> and yeah. <laughs> um, so that the second I I enjoyed the second one a hell of a lot better than the first one. Is that the one where I'm they? So is that the one that. where they get the wooden tablet thing and then they speed through the camera to get it? And mm-hmm. it's so good. Yeah, the first the second one is like so they, fun. Right, they're bad. The, okay, the first one's a bad film, but it's a lot of fun. It's got yeah. the adventure yes. vibes. Yeah, it's, it's got a the, big the adventure. Fir- the mystery I, um, adventure vibes. There's a clue I, here. There's a clue here that somehow remains that, untouched. That, that clue leads to another clue, which leads to another clue, which leads to another yeah. clue. But, yeah. but um, this string uh, of John clues has, has remained untouched for hundreds of years. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's so 
I will say that National Treasure 2 is one of my earliest uh, cinema memories too. Oh, um, nice. I saw that film twice okay. in theatres oh, uh, when I was a kid. We went with my um, grandparents and my actual dad wanted to go see it because we hyped it up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I went to go see it. Ed Harris is a better villain than Sean Bean, by the way. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, so I just like the, I, the whole adventure hunt treasure hunt in the second one better mm. where they got to go to the um the desk the resolute desks oh um so good and you've got so Phil Dunphy the popping office. his head in yeah yes um, um yes but you um, want to steal the declaration of independence real quick look the fact that they're just carrying around the declaration of the first one <laughs> they go to the queen's resolute desk so that's just as ridiculous yeah but they don't walk around with the desk <laughs> they're like alone with the with this like antique desk that there's two of in the yeah. world they get yeah they get to the oval office but and stuff here's like the that. thing christian yeah is yeah, that, yeah it's just as unrealistic they, they steal the declaration of independence they don't go and look at it they take it and then continue to have it on them for the rest of the film. Yeah, yeah they do have <laughs> right. it with them the entire time. They do that get is lemon juice on it as well. Never considered until right now, actually. Because <laughs> they do they... end up in cahoots with the FBI guy. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. Harvey Keitel. <laughs> yes. I, but yeah, he never goes like, oh, by the way, the entire government needs the declaration. Like, I yeah, can't we pull super that need string. that. We, we just need that one back. <laughs> we, we, we super like, need that. That's so, above my level. I will say that, yeah, the, they both have the adventure Pirates of the Caribbean type vibes. We're like, this is an adventure. Let's go. We're having fun. They do have those vibes and that help. And Nicolas Cage helps them a hell of a lot. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So the cage is truly uncaged yeah. in, um, in those films. But, uh, yeah, the second one's a lot better, in my opinion. Yeah, I love, I love, I love both of them so much. But the second one is fantastic. Mm. Yeah. It's, so it's been good because uh, when I've been watching this American Revolution stuff, like the crossing, the name Gates keeps getting mentioned. Yes, <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, his his nephew, his, his <laughs> grandson's going to steal the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> um, I watched another film which I've seen many, many times. is mm. absolutely one of my favorites, and I dare say it's the best film from this. It's my favorite film from this director. It's Prisoners. Um, oh yes, yes. So so That's this good. director's has. This, the, Denis Villeneuve, it's him. It's Denis. Yeah. He's done June. He's done Blade Runner. He's done Sicario. He's done Arrival. This, this is my favorite out of all of his films. Damn. Um, really? Yep. Yeah. This one makes me mad though because <laughs> the fact that it didn't get nominated for anything at all. Um, this is the best Jake Gyllenhaal performance. This is the best Hugh Jackman performance. Mm. Um, and th- this is one of the ones where the mystery is so good, and then the payoff holds up. Yeah. I uh, really- one of those where. You- yeah. It's it's not black and white either because even at yeah. the end with the kid that he's torturing, you're just like, oh shit! Mm. Like you're he's just like, <sighs> almost like you can't blame him. Like uh, mm. yeah, this yeah, is I've one that's been in my watch list on, for ages. Yeah, it's mm. yeah. on there now. I've seen this one pop up on Netflix, and I keep seeing it in like uh, like TikToks of people like the like best movies people need to watch. Like, well, I keep seeing it in those sort of lists. I have no mm. idea. I didn't know this movie mm. existed until about. Well, it started popping up on Netflix and stuff. This so is what, what one is of it? the. This is one of the ones that I didn't know existed. I th- I watched it the year it came out. Though, I was saying this. Yeah, um, I saw it in I, cinemas. I, I saw this one in cinemas. Did you? That's cool. Yeah. I, I saw it in cinema. I I found this out through a YouTuber I watched. It had it as number one film of the year. So when I watched it the next moment, I could. Nice. See, my um, mum loves Hugh Jackman, so she was right. telling me about that. Yep. Um, I reckon this came out in 2013. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's it. about. Hugh Jackman and Terrence Howard, um, both their little girls go missing. Ooh, and okay. um, Jake Gyllenhaal plays the detective who's tasked with finding them. He's, ta- he's, tasked, oh, okay. he, he's on the case. And it's... He's so good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the best role. He's, he's like, when he, like, just at one point, he's just had enough, he grabs a keyboard and starts smashing it. Um, mm. Or is that when he's incredible. driving the kid? At the end, with, he's got blood like, in his eye. And he's shit. like... Um, yeah. So... Yeah, because you two haven't seen it, I won't spoil it too much. Mm-hmm. But um, because it is it is a really good like investigation. Yeah. Film. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll definitely check this, this out soon. It's it's long. It's two hours and forty five. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't feel like Gosh. it. Um, yeah. Okay. And I Hugh Jackman remember it being like that. Yeah. Yeah, Hugh Jackman's incredible in it. Um, he play like it, the film focuses so much on like the different parents' reactions to mm. the situation like um 
like Hugh Jackman's very not very much not like someone just to sit down and let other people do. He needs to be involved in yeah. it, and like that takes him down dark paths. Mm. And then like um uh, yeah, everyone in it's fantastic. The reveal's fantastic. The ending's one of my favorite endings in cinema. Um, it's incredible. Cool. Uh, and yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal knocks it out of the park, and they're all really good in the film. Nice. Also yeah, starring bit- Thirteen Reasons Why, Dylan Minnette. <laughs> oh wow! That's uh, just in everything nowadays. He's he's an all. Yeah, my god. Have you, have yeah, you, definitely it? watch it. Yeah, his song was one of the songs in the credits at Scream. In the new oh, one. was it? Yeah, not the oh, first one that plays that. over the the first set of credits. Yeah. That, that plays the scroll of the credits. That's his band. Oh, that's great! I didn't even realize it was him. I think we were leaving shortly after that time, so I wasn't paying attention. But you did. You didn't wait for the post credit scene of Scream. Oh, was there a post credits? <laughs> No. <laughs> Ghostface steps out of his grave and it's just like Bleh. no. Nick Fury um, comes up and says he's putting together a team. <laughs> putting together a team and it's someone dressed like Ghostface. <laughs> and then they do they... Freddie and Jason walk out. Oh my god, that'd be so on the nose. What happened to crossovers of like horror franchises? The they tried it. Freddie and, and Jacob. Oh, that was the two thousands, Michael. Oh, was it? Freddie, was Freddie it? versus oh. Jason was early two thousands. Fairly recent. Yeah. No, the only wanna, one we've gotten. I want to see like like us and the Babadook, like <laughs> us versus the Babadook. Yeah, it's just like what? Midsummer and the Child's Play would be good. Oh, I still need to watch Midsummer. Yeah, Midsummer's a ride. Yeah, Midsummer's a lot. <laughs> um, oh god, I forgot what I was gonna say now. That's probably it. We're probably done. That, that is it? probably it. I think. I think we have done. Yeah, we, we've we basically hit a nail on the head. I do want to recommend two documentaries about art um, very quickly. Uh, one is Made You Look, which Mikhail and I watched uh, a little while ago, um, which was great. That's about art forgery, the biggest like art forgery case that's ever okay. happened. Um, cool. And then we also watched a, a four-part series, uh, which is called This Is A Robbery, which is about the, the most expensive art heist ever. They've never found them, and it's a full investigation into the whole thing. Is that the one that BuzzFeed Unsolved did? Uh, Um, I think they touched on it a bit. It's the Boston Museum. Yeah, I think they Uh, did do that one. Yeah, maybe. It does ring a bell. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the Boston Museum, it's like Michaela did the maths for, like, inflation. It's almost like half a billion dollars in art. Good on you. And they've just never found them. And like, I love this. I love this kind of like. They end up going into like deep, like these were the Italian mobsters in Boston at the time who were highly suspected of doing it and everything. Like, here's all these things of like the FBI didn't look into I, this at this time. Like, if a lot. I don't mind the the criminals get away stories when like it's just oh. link stuff. Yeah. When it's like when it's like art and that, and it's just like yeah, because that's know. fascinating. That's cool. It's like they got away. Who has the art? Like where is it? Like bank and, robberies and that. It was just like oh, yeah. they stole from a bank and they got away. That's a cool, interesting story. When they didn't no, kill anyone. When no one got hurt, it's sweet. It's interesting, um, and you're like oh, good on yeah. you, criminals. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's honestly it's very interesting. I highly recommend it. Uh, and then very quickly as well, never seen it before, and then finally watched it. Uh, what we do in the shadows. I, I I really mm. liked it. It was Ooh. really fun. Yes. Yeah. Um, I totally get the appeal of it. Michaela was not exactly a fan just because she said it felt like a cringy YouTube video. Oh no. <laughs> but... She watched the TV show. The TV show is very good as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've heard good things from you guys. Um, but yeah, so I finally got around to seeing it and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really the, fun. The biggest crime with that show, uh, the movie, is that they never made the spin off movie, the werewolf one. Oh, they're just going to call it. The they were, it's going to be Reese Darby and his crew, and they were going to just do another mockumentary about the werewolves. Yeah, and it's going to be called Werewolves. So, we <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, oh, we, are, we are, yeah, we are, yeah. We are, we are wolves. Yeah. God, that would be um, so fun. Yeah, they, they had that. It's pretty great. It was so funny in that movie. That's like the biggest strategy ever that they didn't end up making oh, that. That's a shame. That's a shame. Uh, but no, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. And that is the end of episode 141 of MMT Millennial Movie Talk, a movie podcast. Uh, you can subscribe on YouTube and comment and like and all that on the video service known as YouTube. You can subscribe and follow on your podcast service of choice, which is where you're listening to us in your ear holes. And you can follow us on, I don't know, Instagram and stuff. Uh, Patreon.com yeah, slash Millennial Movie Talk. Uh, add Michael on Facebook. Oh, that's a throwback. Yeah, and with saying that, I'm ready. Slow down.
Slow down. <laughs> I'm Michael. I'm Mouse. Christian. <laughs> oh. Slow down, Christian. Slow down. <laughs> oh. I'm Christian. <laughs> I'm Alex. We're out of here. We're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you slowed down too much. So slow. <laughs> Go faster, Alex. And we're, bye. Get out of here. Yeah. 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 See ya. Bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. 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 Bye now. Bye now. Bye. Why are you still bye here? Why, yeah. Why are you still here? The movie's oh over. God. Toy Story, Toy Story 2 is so good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm I'm doing Ferris Bueller. <laughs> we we all um, knew. No, yeah. no, Chris and I were on the exact same wave. Like Toy yep. Story 2, Barbie just waving bye to everyone and then like, oh my Bye bye now. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> uh, I was doing Ferris Bueller. <laughs> <laughs>